Brendan joins us now from New Zealand, where he's currently on tour with his Mrs. Brown's Boys show. Welcome to you, Brendan. I mean, what an extraordinary thing to unearth about your own family. Mm. Uh, what was your reaction when you discovered th this uh, bizarre thing which had gone on which you weren't aware of? Well, a little bit annoyed, uh, to be honest, because, you know, this is not five generations back that we're talking about. We're talking about, you know, my dad's generation, and, and this was never spoken about. I knew nothing of it. I knew, I knew a little of it. Uh, obviously, I knew about the 1916 Rising because I was in school when we celebrated the 50th anniversary, but I had no idea of the depth of the involvement of, of my family, and it wasn't until I, I did the Who Do You Think You Are? that I found out that my, my, my grandfather had been assassinated. And then that led back to Liam's um, contemporary statement that he made in the 30s uh, about what his involvement was. And then in tracking them um, through their involvement in the 1916 Rising, it was really uh, very much an eye-opener. One of the experts some pointed out something really uh, interesting to me. He said, at that time, in 1916, over the previous 20 years, the way to prove yourself a man, whether in, in Britain or in Ireland, was to join the military and fight. Uh, and that was like really to prove your manhood. So there was that surrounding them. The World War I was, was, was going on. Men were marching off to war. They were already drilling uh, as, as a, a, a civilian army uh, of sorts. Um, so the leap from that to, to fighting for a, a rising, uh, to have an uprising, wasn't that big a leap. But the other side of me is, there were supposed to be 5,000 or 15,000 of them. Most of them didn't turn up. They went out on, 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 on a, an Easter Monday morning with 2,000 men across the country that had 25, 30,000 British soldiers in it to try and, to try and take them on. And that, that, that takes more than idealism, you know. I, I, I really, without calling it stupidity, it obviously wasn't stupidity, but there must have been something about that time Brendan, that made them feel it was OK to do that. And yeah. that's bizarre. And, Brendan, your own father was nine years old when he was shot in the shoul shoulder and left for dead. You know, I mean, this was an extraordinarily dramatic thing. Yes. Were you aware of that when you grew up? Your dad, I think, had a, a stammer for much of his life as a direct result of this. Were you aware of the background? Yeah. I was aware of it, but funny enough, it was told in the context of a different story in that the, the, um, my dad was, was lying half in, half out of his doorway. Um, and because it was curfew uh, in, in Dublin at that time, nobody would come out of their homes. And it was a, a journalist um, who, uh, who, found, who took him, found him on the street. He had a, a curfew pass. And he took him around to the hospital where, where he delivered him to the hospital. And so it turned out that that journalist was actually my mother's father, who was also, she was nine at the time, and they ended up being, being married. So wow, I suppose my, my great-grandfather saved my... My grandfather said, me, I know, it's a, listen, it's all bizarre. The more and more I went into all this, the more I realised that Ireland is very much a little village and that um, the, the circumstances that surround everything that we do, somebody else uh, is involved. Yeah. It, was a, it was a tremendous journey for me to take. It was a heart-wrenching journey. Some of it I found um, funny in a, in a peculiar way. But I suppose the overriding um, feeling for me was, it genuinely was, a feeling of... I don't know if I, if I have that kind of idealism myself, uh, to admire their, their belief in, in standing up to do something that they truly and absolutely believe for and were willing, were willing to die for. I haven't found anything yet, probably by my children, that I, I would be, uh, right be willing to die for. I remember when we did the piece about my grandfather being, being shot, he opened that door that night knowing they were going to shoot him. Yeah. Um, because, you know, they wanted, they wanted his sons. Um, and he wasn't about to reveal it. And, and people Brendan, said to me, what would to... you have done in that case? Brendan, we could talk about this for hours, because it's, it's an absolutely gripping story. And I, yeah, really, too, I really applaud you for mm. uh, embracing it, because obviously it's not easy to talk yeah. about this. Thank you. Um, but it's a fascinating part of your family's history, and we appreciate your candour in talking about it. Very quickly, you're doing Mrs Brown Boy's tour. How's that going? It's going very, very well, except that we're, we're right down at the edge of the world. We're in Christchurch at the moment, which, God love them, has been uh, ravaged by the earthquakes and, and continues to get rumbled every day. But we're <laughs> here to give them a bit of a laugh. So hopefully for two hours, they'll come and switch off and just have a laugh. Brilliant. Well, come into the studio. You know you're welcome any time yeah. when you're back, Brendan. Uh, it's always Thank lovely you, to see you. Thank you, Suzanne. Good morning, Piers. Thank you very much. Lovely to see you. Great Take care, Brendan.